Hi everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some new features that have come to Good Notes that I really think are worth taking a look at. Now the features that I'm going to be covering in this video have probably been released over the last couple of months, so it's not like all new features that came out like yesterday or anything like that, but it's more features that maybe you would have missed if you weren't paying attention that I just want you to be able to take advantage of and know about. Before we get into the rest of the video, I do want to thank today's sponsor, which is ESR. One of the most important important accessories that you will need when you have an iPad is a good quality stylus. So I want to share with you one of the best alternatives to the Apple Pencil, which is the GeoDigital Pencil from ESR. This digital pencil is full of amazing features and it's only $30. It even comes with the same Find My features that you will find on the Apple Pencil Pro. So once you've connected your Geo Digital Pencil to your iPad, you simply need to go into the Find My app, go to Add Accessory, and just like that, you can now locate your digital pencil. Now I'm someone who's constantly losing my pencil all the time, so I think this is a very helpful feature. And if you need even more help with not losing your digital pencil, the Geo Digital Pencil can also be attached securely to the side of your iPad with its built-in magnets. It also has some great Bluetooth features like the shortcut button at the back of the pencil that allows you to quickly navigate to your home screen or access the multitasking window. And you can easily view the battery status of your pencil with the real-time battery widget. Plus with its exceptional palm reject and tilt sensitivity, it's perfect for all your note-taking needs. The Geo Digital Pencil is also compatible with all iPads that were released after 2018, and that also includes the new 2025 lineup that was recently released, which is the iPad 11 and the new iPad Airs. So if you're looking for a digital pencil that won't break the bank, I highly recommend the Geo Digital Pencil by ESR. I will have all the links in the description so that you can go ahead and get your hands on it. And thank you again so much to ESR for sponsoring this portion of today's video. So I'm in GoodNotes right now and these are all the features that I'm going to be covering. There are five and these are just really nice features that I highly recommend you take advantage of if you are a GoodNotes 6 user. So the first feature is one that I don't think I've ever really covered in a video on GoodNotes and this is a really helpful feature to organize your handwriting, especially if you're someone who mostly uses handwriting in GoodNotes and note taking. I usually do like a combination of using a lot of text and also a lot of handwriting, but this is really helpful for handwriting. So I'm gonna have my lasso tool selected and I'm just gonna select this handwriting that I have here. I'm gonna click on that and then you'll see this little icon here. This is so that you can go into resize mode. Now with this, you have these four dots on the edges of your square, which is your selection for your handwriting. You also have these two dots in the middle of each side so with this, you can easily just resize your handwriting using the four little dots on the edges, or you can use the two dots on the sides to expand the box that your handwriting is in. It works basically the same as a text box would. So right now we have the three words at the top and the one here at the bottom. But when I drag this side to make it big enough, as you can see, that handwriting now moved to next to the rest of the handwriting. So you can just make this as big as small as you want to basically organize your handwriting and have it fit the box that you want. So this is really helpful if you have a large piece of handwriting and you wanna resize and restructure your notes. So now with one single selection of the lasso tool, you can easily restructure your notes to make it fit into a certain size box rather than having to use the lasso tool and select each word individually and move it around. With this, you also have a few other features like being able to select the words in your handwriting. So I can easily select my handwriting here. As you can see, it's, it's selecting it as of its text and I can easily edit this as I want. So I can maybe just select one of these words and delete it. And as you can see, it just moved that handwriting up and only that one word was deleted. So again, this helps that you don't have to restructure your entire section of handwriting when deleting just a single word in a sentence. So yeah, this just makes organizing and editing your handwritten notes much easier. The next feature isn't actually all that new. We've had tape for a while now. I have mentioned it in other videos as well, but you can now have custom patterns within tape. And a lot of people were asking for this so they luckily did listen to the users and brought this feature in. So now when you're in your tape section, when you go here to your color, you will see you have your solid colors here, but you also have these different patterned tapes that you can now use throughout 
your notes. These are all patterns that GoodNotes has incorporated into the app themselves, but you can also easily create your own patterns or upload your own custom patterns. So I'm gonna click on this little plus button here to create a new tape style. And we have a few options here. So the first one is add a solid color. So this is quite simply that what we've already had, you just have a solid color for your tape. The next option is upload from files. And this is how I created these custom washi tape patterns. So I just uploaded an image with this gingham style and that created it into a pattern that you can now use. So I'm gonna go from upload to files. These are the patterns that I uploaded. So you just click on the image, and then you can see here's a preview of what that tape looked like. So you can do this with literally any image. You can even like do a little graphic. So I'm gonna select upload from files. I'm just gonna select this image that I made for my February sticker pack, but this is a really simple just way to show you. So now it repeats that image into a little pattern that I can now use in tape. Obviously some images will work better for this than others, but you kind of get the gist. It also depends on the size that you make your wash tape how it will present that pattern so this one is going like one and a half of that image kind of if I go for like a smaller sized washi tape like this you will see it only shows one row of that design um, but obviously like abstract images and things could also look really nice with this or the much simpler way that you can go about creating your own custom patterns is using their presets so you just go to this plus button again select customize a preset and here are all the ones that i mentioned that goodnotes already gave you but with this you can now go in and change the color of each of these little pieces so for this one you can customize each square's color for all the different parts of that pattern click on add to presets and now you have a custom preset for a tape so that is how you can also go about customizing presets that they already gave you for tape and then just using that as your custom tapes by the way the images that created this gingham pattern i will have linked in the description for free so you can just go ahead and upload those images to goodnotes if you want this exact washi tape style so yeah that will be in the description box if you're interested okay so the next feature is one that i was really excited about when i heard that it was coming to go notes finally and that is stroke stabilization this is something that i've wanted for years in GoodNotes because i love hand lettering but i just simply cannot do it in good notes with the pen settings it's way too hard it just turns out all swiggly and weird so now we finally have stroke stabilization so what that means is i'm gonna go here on the pen icon and you will see here in your pen settings stroke stabilization right now i'm on the ball pin it does work for your fountain pen and your brush pin as well which i think will be really nice because usually you use like a brush pin for hand lettering and with your fountain pen and the brush pen you will get some variation in your stroke when you apply more pressure but yeah so i'm just gonna use the ball pin right now so when i go ahead and make my stroke stabilization a bit higher it just makes it easier to control your strokes if you want to do some lettering so i'm just gonna write down a word in hand lettering style so that is already so much better than if i were to have it on zero percent and no control over my strokes so this is what it then would turn into i wish i could say this is for exaggeration purposes that it looks this squiggly and weird but that's honestly just always how my hand lettering looked when i tried to do it with the default pen settings on goodnotes i just can't find like the nice smooth motion that i can maybe do with like a pen on paper so i'm really happy about this i use this all the time when i just want to do like a little bit of lettering maybe in my calendar in goodnotes or things like that it just makes it look really nice you can also use this if you maybe want to do some drawing that just requires a bit more precision. This just really helps with making it a lot easier. Just to show you using the Apple Pencil Pro, the um, Geo Pencil from ESR doesn't have pressure sensitivity, so I can't show it to you with that. Um, but with the fountain pen selected, which can have pressure sensitivity, as you can see, you can toggle it here. Just to show you what lettering would look like with that with some pressure sensitivity, so that's more variation in your strokes um this is what it will look like i'm not in love with the brush pen and the fountain pen in goodnotes and how it handles that but yeah it is 
a big improvement now that we have the stabilization. Sorry, that was a very long-winded explanation of what stroke stabilization is, but I'm just really happy about this feature. I've been waiting for it for a long time. Now we have audio links. Now this is probably one of the newest features that Goodnotes was released. I was really confused about what this actually is, but I find a way that I think will help you kind of understand how this can be used. So here I have just created a note with some notes that I took while doing an audio recording. So what this feature essentially does is it allows you to create a link from a text box. So when you click on that text box, the link will work to skip your audio recording to a certain section. So for instance, if I click on this text box that I added in that I created a link on, when I click on it, I can go to play recording and it will start to play when I started this section of my notes. So at 11 minutes and 40 seconds, I started writing the notes on this section, but I added this link in after I already did the audio recording. Again, this might seem really confusing, but I'm just gonna make this really easy for you. So to explain this, let's say I just finished my class writing my notes and I saved the audio recording. So the audio recording is saved to this section here. Here you can see my audio recording while I did these notes. So if I scan through this notes, you will see that's grayed out. As soon as I get to that section, it will start to fill in when I wrote that specific note. But now after class, when I'm reviewing my notes, I wanna make it really easy to just skip to a certain part in my audio recording by just clicking on a text box, maybe for the heading of that section so in my audio recording i'm gonna find where i started this little section so here i'm gonna start writing so this is where i started writing my notes on this specific section so i'm gonna go to where, right when i started it so that's at 80 minutes and four seconds i'm gonna click on my text box and i'm gonna write the title so I've added in my text heading. I did actually write the same heading in handwriting when I did the notes. So I'm just gonna quickly erase that. So the text is now gonna replace that heading. So now since I added in this text at the exact same timestamp that I started writing this section of my notes. Now, if I go to just review my notes, I'm gonna go out of the audio recording. If I tap on this text and I go to play recording, you will see it will automatically start at that timestamp. So this again, just makes it really easy once you're reviewing your notes and you wanna be able to quickly just skip to a part of your recording and make it really easy for you in the future for reference, then you can easily just add in these text boxes and link them to that specific timestamp. I know this feature sounds really confusing. I think they could have maybe done it in a different way just to make it more just straightforward, but that is how you can go about doing this. Let me know if this is a feature that you think you'll even be using when it comes to your note taking. Also, you don't have to use this as like a way to have section headings. If you've already written your section headings in handwriting and you wanna add in a text box to link to that specific timestamp, you can simply just add in a text box with like an emoji. So I'm gonna put in this brain emoji and I added that in at 11 minutes, 54 seconds in the recording. So now when I click on that emoji icon and select play recording, it's gonna start at 11 minutes, 52 seconds. So you get the gist, you can use it with anything that is in a text box if you want to have like a little icon that you can click to skip to that part of the recording or you wanna change all your section headings to text for that link, you can do that as well. So that's audio links, a really confusing feature that GoodNotes released for audio recordings and skipping certain timestamps using links. I think this feature can be really helpful when you apply it correctly, but it is just really confusing. Now the last feature is actually not a new feature. I'm gonna to try to cover this fairly quickly, but GoodNotes did a weird update where when you access the emoji keyboard in GoodNotes, it only shows emojis where previously you could see your emojis as well as all the stickers that you had saved on your iPad that you could use in iMessage and notes and all that. And also the new custom emojis that is also available with iOS 18. You could see all that in your keyboard, but now they just completely remove that. So you can only access emojis in this keyboard. So easy workaround for this. If you are someone who is gonna be using these custom stickers and emojis in your notes, in GoodNotes, maybe for your digital planners or something like that, you can just open up the notes app or the messages app in split screen. 
and then open up the emoji keyboard in that app, not in GoodNotes. So I'm gonna open up my emoji keyboard in the Notes app. Here you can see these are all my custom stickers that I have saved on my iPad. I added in a lot of them when we got the new custom emojis feature so here you can see oh yeah gen emojis so you can create your own emojis if you have an ipad that supports it but also i just wanted to have access to all the stickers that i created using these subject selection features on your ipad so here you can see all the stickers that i have in there that i just wanted to have access to so now when you have this keyboard open in the notes app you can easily just drag and drop those stickers into good notes just like that so if you were curious why you can't access these anymore in GoodNotes, I don't know why they changed it, but you can now just use it this way. So yeah, this works for Genmojis that you've created or just your custom stickers that you've saved on your iPad. You can just easily drag and drop them into GoodNotes by going through the Notes app rather than trying to access them through the emoji keyboard in GoodNotes itself. It's a weird workaround, I know, but I really like to use those stickers in my digital planners and things like that, so I thought it was worth mentioning. So those are all the features that I wanna cover that are fairly new to GoodNotes 6 that maybe if you didn't see them in a video, you might not even know about them. They're kind of hidden away. Um, yeah, I just think these are really worth checking out. I hope you guys could learn something new from this video, maybe a feature that you didn't know existed. All these features I think are really helpful that I would just recommend you at least take a look at if you can incorporate it somehow into your usage of GoodNotes. Some of these features are more exciting than others, but I'm just happy that we're still getting continuous updates to GoodNotes and it feels like developers are kind of listening to what people are all wanting. Like for instance, the stroke stabilization, which I know a lot of people have been asking for for a long time. And yeah, we're just continuously getting updates. So I'm really happy about that. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate Appreciate you guys i really hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys next time bye